Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship at St. Andrew Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Jenna, and I am so excited that you are joining us this morning. Thank you for making the time to worship with us. Um, as always, your announcements are available in the worship materials that Anita sent out, but there are a few things that I want to draw attention to, so bear with me, please. Um, the first is that Becky Patrick, our longtime uh, board member for COOL, is um, needing to step down because she has uh, reached the six-year cap uh, for sitting on the board. And we are looking for someone who would be willing to step into, um, into that role. Becky has lots of uh, information and, and can help explain to you, for, uh, explain to you what what that role entails, um, but COOL is the Christian outreach of Lutherans in the Lake County area, and they are committed to providing comprehensive assistance to families in need by reducing hunger and homelessness while also providing other necessary uh, care. So things with uh, the COVID pandemic have taken a situation that is already really difficult and made it even harder. And so the work that COOL is continuing to do is really important. And so if that is something that is, um, is really near and dear to your heart, please reach out to the office and we'll put you in contact with Becky, um, unless you have already have her contact information. And then I encourage you to reach out directly to her. Um, we are, uh, we have entered the season of uh, having to move back indoors, right? And I know that for many folks, there's a lot of anxiety that church is returning to only an online format, um, especially with the pre-recorded services, which aren't as dynamic. And so um, I want to let you know that our worship and music team and those folks who have been helping to make the pre-recorded services happen, we are working on having live Zoom worship. And so that's going to be starting in November. Um, if you are interested in helping out with the soft launches, um, um, the weeks where we'll still be pre-recording and then also having live Zoom worship on Sunday mornings um, where we will gather in our respective locations, uh, wherever you might be, we'll gather via Zoom and worship in that way. Um, if you're interested in that, please reach out to me um, or Bill List or uh, Steve Jacobson. Um, any one of us will help get you plugged into that um, for the, the kind of the soft launch. If Zoom is causing you a lot of anxiety, that's okay. Um, I, I do get that. Um, please, please reach out. We, anyone, any one of us at church, um, especially you know myself or anyone um, in our leadership roles, we would be happy to help help you to navigate that. Um, in our, this month's encounter, there is also a um, a resource for a step by step of um, how to even get Zoom on your computer, let alone how to access a meeting. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, with that, we are moving into our stewardship series this season, right? Like I actually really love stewardship. Um, we tend to want to tiptoe around things, right? The three topics we're never supposed to talk about are money, religion, and politics, right? Well, uh, we're in a church and money and politics are a part of our life, especially um, with, uh, the up with the upcoming national election. And so these are the things that we talk about. I'm really excited to be doing it. We're utilizing a resource this year called a sanctified art. And so um, some of our liturgy will be a little bit different. And there's also a prayer journal that is coming along with this um, that um, by the time you watch this, it should be sent out via email. And if not, it's going to be coming out very, very soon. Um, but if you need any hard copies of any of the resources, please let us know. We will gladly get those printed and get those sent off to you. So just let let myself, let Anita know, um, and we'll we'll get that taken care of. Um, we are going to actually be using that um, that prayer journal to help us um, get back into Bible study again. I know there have been lots of questions about when this, when we're resuming, when we're starting it. Um, we're going to be starting it back up again uh, this upcoming week. On Thursday, not Wednesday, on Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Um, again, this is going to be via Zoom. Um, we don't um, we don't have uh, things in place to be able to uh, somewhat safely gather in person, and so um, please bear with us as we as we 
uh, try something new. We try something new. It's oh, it's it's we're we're in this together. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. I'm really excited. I've missed Bible study. I know you all have really missed Bible study. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, that link is available in your worship materials. It'll be available in the encounter, and you can always reach out to myself or Anita to get that, and we'll we'll share that with you again. Um, so that is what I have for our announcements this morning. Thank you for bearing with me. Let us now turn our hearts to worship as we ready in um, ready our minds and our hearts. We begin with our call to worship. May we remember that God created. May we remember that God liberated. May we remember that God fed. May we remember that God is still creating, God is still liberating, and God is still feeding us. Let this be our story. Let this be where we begin. Let us worship Holy God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and um, with one another in spirit. Holy God, we admit to remembering the wrong things. We remember worldly lessons like everyone for themselves, an eye for an eye, and all is fair in love and war. And yet we forget to forgive 70 times seven, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to live like the body of Christ. Why is it so hard to remember the right things? Release us from our muscle memory and recenter us in a new place, a fresh place, a space grounded in your love. Help us to receive your word anew and to consider stewardship not with the world's rules, but with your rules. Help us remember. With hope we pray. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Let us pray our prayer for this day. Holy God, there is something about scripture that makes, that stirs us awake. For when we hear of a deep love that made room for everyone at the table, we remember that we are hungry. And when we hear of manna raining down in the desert, we remember that we are lost. There's something about scripture that stirs us awake and it feels like hunger and it looks like hope. So stir us awake, O oh God. Remind us that this story starts with love and ends with love. We are hungry, which is to say, we are listening. Amen. <laughs> Will I dance for you, Jesus? 
or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine That day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak? All I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this, uh, for our children's time and our children's message this morning. And I wanted to start us off by imagining the last time we went on a trip. Now, I know for some of us, it's probably been quite a while since we've gone anywhere, but I mean, have you uh, gone on any errands with your family members? Have you maybe gone to the grocery store? or to the library. Um, I know some of you are back in some of your sports and extracurriculars, right? So think about that. Who went with you when you go, when you went on your last trip, whether it was far or whether it was close by? Did you go alone? Probably not, right? Most of you, most of you, if not all of you who are watching this are a little too young yet to be driving on your, on your own, right? 
What does it feel like when you leave your house? Do you feel anything? Do you feel anything when you leave the house? What do you suppose it would feel like to go on a trip where you didn't know where you were going or when you were going to get there, right? Have you ever felt like that? What questions did you ask? Did you even ask any questions or were you like me and you kind of slept through the whole, the whole ride? What sort of questions might you ask if you were on a big journey like the Israelites were in the desert, right? The story that we just heard from the book of Exodus, right? It's the second book in the Bible. Go ahead and op- you can open your Bibles. Maybe open if your parents have one or if you've got your storybook Bible. The Exodus book is the second one in our Bibles. And the Israelites in this story began wondering how they would eat. They had packed their bags and were ready for a trip But after a while, they ran out of food that they had packed to bring with them. And worse yet, they were in a desert, which meant that there wasn't really any animals or plants or water that was easy to find, right? But God still gave them food. In the Bible, There are stories that have been handed down from year to year and generation to generation. It's like when our grandparents tell us a story, right? We're different generations. We tell stories about God to remind ourselves of our history and how much God loves us. Can you recall a moment when you felt loved? Maybe you feel loved right now. Or maybe you have a specific time where you were with a family member or a friend and it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy because you felt so loved. Did you know, though, that you are loved by God? Yes, you are. You are loved by God. The creator of everything loves you, knows you, and loves you. How cool is that? We can remember when God showed up and did something important. We can remember that God provides, uh, so provides for each of us so that we all have enough, enough bread to eat and enough to share with everybody in the community. Let us pray. I invite you to repeat after me, please. Dear God, thank you for always taking care of me. Help me always remember how much you love me. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 18. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, It'll be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard you complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, 
because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as you need. An omber to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it, with an amber, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as they needed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning in the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for a way for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? He said, listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the room, is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show, show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. 
Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloveds, grace and peace to you in the name of the Holy One. Amen. My Grandma Bev always made the absolutely best chocolate fudge. It was rich and smooth, but not too dense, so you didn't feel like you were eating a brownie. Not that there's anything wrong with brownies, but you know, when you want fudge, you want fudge. And sometimes she'd put some walnuts in it, and but most of the time it was just plain chocolate. And it was so good. My grandma always had some of it around, along with plenty of other homemade candies. I remember the fudge so vividly, though, because it was an important part of my childhood. Every year, my mother's family would go to the Wisconsin Dells for a few days, and my grandparents were determined that all of the grandkids would have spending money for the arcade games and tourist traps and vending machine junk food, right? My grandparents remembered that while their two children had always been housed clothed and fed, there was no extra money for family vacations growing up, and their own parents didn't have extras for the grandkids. No fun trinkets, no goofy t-shirts or stuffed animals to bring home, or piles of arcade tickets to spend. And while my grandparents didn't have a lot of extra to just give to us, they could economically make fudge, which we could then uh, make some good money off of. When I look back on those annual family trips, I remember being surrounded by love and abundance. I remember the sore feet I had after walking around my rather large neighborhood and selling grandma's fudge door to door. I remember the smell of my great uncle's mechanic shop where we would go to sell Bev's fudge I remember repeatedly, once we were all was said and done, I remember repeatedly counting out the money that I had made and how delighted my grandma and grandpa were as they celebrated with all of us, all, my sister and cousins and I. On this All Saints Sunday, we remember all those saints who have come before us and we remember the ways in which those saints have influenced our relationship with and our story of money. This stewardship theme is intentionally direct. It invites us to name exactly what we're talking about and to not skirt around it so that we can reframe how we talk about money. Money and possessions are one of the most common topics in scripture. Jesus talked about money more than faith and prayer. Let that sink in. Jesus talked about money more than he talked about faith and prayer. Our money story, therefore, is a spiritual story. Thinking about God's money should be, God's money story should be liberating, inviting, and transformative. When we look to our scripture for today, uh, and we look to what the Israelites were up to, they were about 45 days into their 40 years of desert wandering, and they too were remembering. But it wasn't a liberating, inviting, or transformative remembrance. They were remembering the food they'd had the bread and meats and easy to obtain water. They'd started to think that maybe being enslaved to the Egyptians wasn't so bad because at least they had permanent dwelling places. Maybe being subjugated wasn't so bad when you consider the present circumstances. Six weeks after they had fled Egypt and passed through the Red Sea, their promised land was nowhere in sight, and their provisions were being consumed at an alarming rate. And the only thing that the pillar of cloud and fire, which was God, the only 
thing that this pillar was leading them into was more sand. They thought that somehow God had forgotten them, that God no longer remembered God's covenant, God's promises to the people of Israel. But God always, always remembers God's promises. God always remembers God's people. God remembers and God provides. Their anxieties and fears and grumblings are understandable, even if it's easier for us to use hindsight to argue that they should have trusted in God. Even in their distrust of God, though, God shows up. I mean, God is already present. A pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. But God remembers even further the promises that God has made and God provides manna, bread that literally rains down from the sky, fresh meat in the form of quails to fill those flesh pots, and soon there will be fresh water too. Just give it a couple more verses. Everyone who gathers the manna and quail has exactly the right amount, whether they under or over gather. Through the leadership of Moses, Aaron, and their sister, Miriam, God moves the Israelites from an economy of fear and deprivation to one of provision in the wilderness, in a desert, which by definition is deserted and largely lifeless. God remembers us. God provides God invites us to trust in God's economy of enough, of having enough. Jesus instructs, instructs us to remember the covenant God has made with us too. The new covenant shed in Jesus' blood for the forgiveness of sin. The cup that is for everyone, even Judas. Even Judas, who accepted money in order to help destroy his teacher, the source of fear for the religious leaders in Jerusalem. Here, money was used in a destructive act to control, to feed into greed and destruction. As we remember all the saints who have gone before us, who are gathered around the table, we remember God's covenant that all are welcome at the table. Even though we are not celebrating communion and worship today, which that'll be changing soon, by the way, our beloved ancestors are no less with us. We remember. We remember the night in which he was betrayed and the cup he blessed for the forgiveness of sin. We remember the story we tell as we celebrate the means of God's grace. We remember God's economy of grace and redemption and more than enough for all. We remember. What is the story we tell when we talk about our faith? When we look at our finances and our budgets? What is it we remember when we give to God what is God's? We all have a money story to tell, whether we recognize it or not. Perhaps we are living from a story of fear or shame, or a story that the church is dying and no longer relevant, or a story that our actions won't have an impact, or a story that we don't have enough. Where might God be speaking a new narrative into the limited ones we have told ourselves? How is God inviting us into holy liberation and transformation? We begin by looking back at what our spoken and unspoken money stories have been and how those stories have impacted our practices of stewardship. And these texts we remember God's steadfast relationship with us throughout all time 
and all trials. We remember that Judas betrayed Jesus in exchange for money, but was still invited to the table. We remember that the Israelites complained in the wilderness, but were met with manna. Even in stories of desperation and deep betrayal, we are gifted with God's provision of the feast of enough and the holy meal of remembrance. It is because of God's invitation to remember that we're going to start including the holy meal in our virtual services. But we are continually invited into remembering all the ways in which God has been and always will be present with us, the way that God is with us now. We remember those stories from our childhoods of fudge, selling fudge to raise funds, of those times where maybe money was scarce and resources were limited. We remember the ways in which God always shows up. We remember because God remembers and God provides. God always has, God is currently, and God always will. Thanks be to God. Amen. for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, 
The universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. We pray for those who have been affected by the most recent hurricane and new forest fires. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country. Red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod. Empower testimony with new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of all healing, we continue to lift up those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. We especially pray for Chuck Fitzhugh as he resumes cancer treatments, and for Penny Swinne, who recently had knee surgery and is recovering. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. We especially hold Sean Beltanay and his family in love as they grieve the recent passing of Maureen. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. Ted Belfouye, Maureen Beltanay, Ernest Cassista, Connie Estrada, Josiah Charles McManus, Bill Glenn, Matteo Riveria, Paul Pullman, Sarah Peterson, Lois Wedge, and those that we name now who have passed in the last year. We also remember those who have died at other times but whose loss we continue to grieve. Lois Belfouye, Bob Beltane, Lori Brzezowski, James Call, Jewel Cud, Raymond Cud, Tom and Elsa Fabizak, Bob Fagerstrom, John Fagerstrom, Carlene Muriel Fitzhugh, Thomas and Carol Greenwood, Donald and Shirley Guler, Jerry and Dolores Hamill, William and Rita Ann Harris, Michael Kaminsky, Mike Kikos, Bill and Donna Kipp, Stephen Allen Kisha, David and Victoria Kobeck, Charles Kobeck, Polly Kruger, Mary Christofiak, Ralph and Ruth Latke, Beverly McKittrick, Michael and Nancy McPherson, Norman Mac Mackey, Richard Mackey, Marty and Luella Marin, Kathy Martin, Jim and Aileen Brown, John and Helen Hayes, Pat Pullman, Stefan and Josephine Plukowski, John Reeves, Judy Sandstrom, Naomi Sievers, Carolyn and Bobby Slaughter, Harold Swinney, 
Howard and Wallene Vander Blumen, Robert Werner, Ronald Wisner, and all those who we now lift up to you, whose loss we continue to grieve. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Dear ones, the peace of Christ be with you always. Although we are scattered far and wide, there is nowhere that God's peace, that Christ's peace, does not go. I invite you to take this moment to share the peace of Christ, uh, whether it's with those you're worshiping with at home or to send a text message, email, Facebook message, or to even pick up the phone and make a phone call to someone you haven't talked to in a while um, as we share that peace of Christ with one another. This congregation has been faithful and generous, even though we haven't been raising up our practice of making an offering to God, the people of St. Andrew have continued to share and to share abundantly. But we're going to return to the weekly lifting up of our offerings. That's been an oversight on my part, and I'm sorry for that. Um, there are a couple of ways to give. The first is to continue to drop off your offering envelopes to church each week. There's someone here on uh, in the office on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you can always slip your envelope between the doors if it's another day. The second option is to give online. So if you go to standrewmundeline.com forward slash donation, you'll be able to make your offering and to set up recurrent, uh, reoccurring offerings. So for all the ways in which we give to God, let us pray. Gracious God, as we come to you today in prayer, we admit that giving is complicated. At times, it is easier to remember our shame or guilt around giving as opposed to your joy or generosity. We all have our money narratives and they affect us in different ways. So today, as we offer our gifts to you, we pray that you would recenter our narrative. Remind us that we do not give out of shame or guilt. We do not give out of obligation. We do not give to feel worthy. And we do not give to buy your grace. We give out of a desire to participate. We give as a sign of gratitude. We give because we belong to one another. We give to build a more just and equitable world. We give because we love and that's what love does. So take these gifts, gifts and remind us that we belong to one another. Remind us that all money narratives are welcome at this table. Remind us that whatever shame or guilt we bring with us will be washed away with your grace and love. Remind us and then help us to build that more beautiful world. And hope we pray as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship and thanksgiving, we do not go alone. And we go with this blessing from God. May the God of all creation and whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, 
who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.